Are you afraid you're missing out on God's plans because you may not be in the right place? Do you feel like the work you do goes unnoticed? Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome to Honestly Radio. Have you ever heard of the term FOMO? It means the fear of missing out. It's defined as anxiety, that an exciting or interesting event is happening somewhere and you're not a part of it. The phenomenon has ramped up to crippling levels, thanks in large part to social media. Suddenly, we're aware of what everyone is doing all the time, and it can feel like we're the ones being left out. It can spark this idea that if I were just at that place, then great things could happen for me. If I could just get the attention of more people, stand on that stage, get noticed on social media, then my life would really begin. Then I would be happy, fulfilled, important, yakety smackety, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. This devastating and false philosophy can poison the mind of a Christian. When suddenly we make our God so small that he can only move in our lives at certain times or specific places. And that can move us to a position where we believe that we're the ones in control and not the other way around. God sees you, whether you're standing on a stage or kneeling in your living room. And regardless of your circumstances, you are wildly and unbelievably loved by God. He recognizes you right where you are. The way you live publicly and privately can honor God tremendously. God doesn't put value in applause, likes, retweets, downloads, or views. No, God delights in our obedience, our submission to his will for our life. And if we're living fully for him, then we're not missing out on anything. And God sees us, hears us, recognizes us, and blesses us right where we're at. Your location doesn't determine your worth and value. The number of people who recognize what you're doing will never bring true validation. Nothing can separate us from God's love and blessing. And we don't need to fear or regret missing anything if we're following Jesus faithfully. We see a remarkable example of this in a young shepherd boy named David, who seemingly was missing out on the opportunity of a lifetime because he was in the quote-unquote wrong place. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Samuel is on his way to anoint the new king of Israel. God told him, go to Jesse's house and choose one of his sons. So that's what Samuel did. The problem from our perspective is this. David, the shepherd boy, was in the fields and not with his dad. We pick it up in verse 6. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab and thought, surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. You see, it's possible to be in the so-called right place, but still miss out. In this case, although Eliab looked the part, was prominently positioned to lead, he was not the one God had chosen. The second part of verse 7 reveals a crucial truth that every Christian needs to understand. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. When wrestling with the concept of an infinite God, the temptation can be to limit an all-knowing, all-seeing God to our narrow and restricted point of view. We can only guess the motivations and heart of another person. Christ actually knows them. He looks past all of the physical aspects, the image that we try to present to the world, and Jesus sees us as we truly are. His unlimited view is able to capture all of who we are and what we're capable of. And even if it appears that you're not positioned for great things, God sees you and recognizes you exactly where you are. The Bible says, in the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked, 
are these all the sons that you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse replied, but he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Although David appeared by every human measurement to be the least of his brothers, he did not appear that way to the Lord. Where others saw a servant and a shepherd, God saw the future king of Israel. And this choice was a foreshadowing to the great shepherd and king who was still to come, Jesus Christ, another boy who would rise from humble beginnings to do incredible things. Sin for him at once, Samuel said. We will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent for him, and the Lord said, This is the one, anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. An important thing to note about David was his humility, obedience, and submission. It didn't matter what it was, if his father called him to do it, he would do it faithfully to the fullest extent of his ability. When he was asked to go take care of the sheep, a very humble job, he did it. Even when it meant taking on a lion or a bear with a stick, he did it. It wasn't for glory or personal recognition. His father asked him to care for the flock, and so he served faithfully. When he was asked to play music for the king, he did it. All of his hours used to learn and practice his craft in private were put to use to serve the ruler of his nation. He served faithfully when called upon. And when his father needed him to serve as a delivery boy, he carried food to the front lines of battle, ensuring that his brothers, who were serving as soldiers, were fed and the captains of the army had enough to eat. Each and every time David was called upon, he answered the call, submitted to his father, obeyed his command, and humbly went above and beyond the task. Not only that, at every opportunity, he didn't demand credit for himself. He gave it all to God. He glorified the name of the Lord and identified where his strength and ability came from. Because where so many saw him as a lowly servant, God saw him as the future king of Israel. So when Samuel anoints David to be the next ruler, the Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. What is God preparing you for? What process has the Lord begun in your life? We don't need to fear missing out on what God has for us. If we are willing to move forward in faith, obedience, and humility, there is no limits to what God can do in your life and through it. It doesn't matter how others look at you. It doesn't matter what title you hold at a company. Jesus doesn't judge you based on the outward appearance. He's looking at your heart. He sees the things that no one else does. He recognizes the greatness within you when no one else notices. And he richly rewards those who pursue him with all their hearts with his miraculous and life-changing presence. The perfect love of Jesus cast out all the fear of missing out. Because the reward is not the recognition, not a lofty title, but a relationship with the eternal King, Christ Almighty. David wasn't pursuing the position of king. He was a man after God's own heart. The kingship didn't fulfill the shepherd boy. No golden crown ever could. It was bowing down at the feet of an almighty God, serving the Lord with obedience and humility. That's what was priceless to the youngest son of Jesse. What are you pursuing today? What is your heart's desire? Do you hunger for the recognition or do you want more of Jesus? Because that's what will determine where you wind up. Don't miss on what Christ has for you. Move forward in faith, obedience, humility, and submit your whole life and heart to Jesus. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Now is a great time to explore God's word yourself by reading 1 Samuel chapter 16 on your own. If you need a Bible, just tap on the link in the Honestly Radio Instagram or Facebook page. 
We have free resources for you, as well as ways to connect and download the podcast. I want to encourage you to seek God daily through prayer, the Bible, and through attendance and service at a local church. Allow Christ to begin building your faith. Thank you for joining us on Honestly Radio. Remember, live honestly, be blessed. We'll see you next time.